first, uh, a small disclaimer. This is not an exhaustive presentation. Uh, I've listed some of the tools uh, that I'm using. And generally, my impression about this area, about the tools, uh, is that they are not satisfactory and that we should try to find out or even to push for the development or of more open and uh, more easy to use and more interoperable tools. So I'm listing the things that I'm using and I'll share my opinion about them. Uh, and I would like you to, to share your opinion uh, also in, uh, in the forum and uh, open up your mic and tell if you used any of these tools or if you have other tools that you're using and the issues that, that you encounter. So apologies to, to Simon, who is an expert in the area. I always have arguments with my colleagues who are expert on free and open source software about terminology. Uh, they make a difference between free software and uh, open source software, and they also mention the term open hardware. Uh, I will be simplifying these terms uh, because they are simplified and they're sometimes misleading in uh, just ordinary conversation, everyday conversation, and as you will find them on the internet, they are not always very accurate. So I'm using the terms that can be encountered uh, when you're browsing the internet and uh, encountering these tools to encounter these terms. Uh, so freeware, uh, this is a, a tool, a software that can be used uh, free of charge, but the code is usually not open. Uh, and you can download an application or use it uh, as a web-based application uh, and you can use it as it is, but you won't be able to uh, do any changes to, the, to the, the source code and to the files. You won't be able to adjust it to, to your needs. Uh, free and open source software or free libre and open source software is a different concept. Uh, it's usually uh, the software where code is open. And uh, it's usually free to use, but you can as access the source code and you can modify the source code. And uh, in most, uh, there are many licenses that apply this. And if you thought that Creative Commons licenses were complicated, you were entirely wrong. Software licenses are incredibly complicated. Uh, so, uh, for example, in free and open source software, uh, the, the, one of the leading concepts is the copyleft, which is... Uh, the closest equivalent to is the CC by uh, share alike license that Jonathan mentioned, and thank you, Jonathan, that you actually uh, use to prevent uh, people from closing the code because they have to share the derivative works under the same license, and the code of these derivative licenses should be, uh, should be of derivative works should be open so that, that others can modify it as well. So this is the meaning of coffee left, and they use another permissive which means that you don't actually have to publish it under a license that is similar to uh, CC by share alike. So it's complicated, but basically this is the software that is free to use and it's the software where the code is open uh, and can be modified uh, and you can adjust uh, and you can either distribute or not distribute uh, the, 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 the derivative works that what, what you've created depending on the license. Freemium is probably something that you most frequently uh, encounter you have software where uh, basic ba some basic options are free, uh, but if you want to use advanced options, then you have to subscribe to, to the service, to some previous option. There are usually uh, multiple previous options, and the more you pay, the more functionalities you get. Uh, and uh, basically, what is the, the, the most important difference between freemium and free trial is that you, in freemium, you retain uh, these basic these basic options you retain the right to use these basic options you want after some time you won't be losing an opportunity to use them so they are basic but you, you will be able to use them forever in free trial uh there are more serious limitations you will uh, the, the key point is that the functionalities are limited in an important way. So either you will, for example, be able to use software for about 30 days or two weeks or six months. And after that, 
you won't have access to it, you won't be able to use it at all, or uh, you will be able to try it, but you won't be able to save the file, or you will be able to save the uh, file in one format that is the most not the most optimal for you, etc. So th this is, but they are usually confounded. It depends, you know, software developers, they are not always legal experts, and it is them who write their policies. And if, the, it, if it is a small startup, you may find those terms just confounded on the websites. But take care about it. Whenever you see uh, these pricing options, this is either freemium or free trial. So check, check it. And sometimes, um, you can find information that might be misleading. They offer something for free, but then when you start using it, you actually discover that you have to pay in order to access some options. So these terms are important because I'm mentioning them later on when discussing uh, individual uh, tools. So what you should pay attention to uh, terms and conditions. We usually skip this section, but that is important. So go to terms and conditions and see whether there are any time uh, usage limitations. For example, I usually have this problem. I see a tool and then I say, oh, wow, this looks great. This is exactly what I need. And I open it, register through Google, my Gmail account, and I start using it. And then when I've already spent half an hour, an hour, and created something, then I say, well, what's next? What shall I do now? Can, can I save it? Shall I make it public, etc.? Some of these tools, uh, in order to use them, especially if, if they are under the freemium model, uh, you can make your works either only publicly available and you cannot close them, or you can make them uh, closed and you cannot make them publicly available. So they, they, there are such kind of limitations as well. Also, what is very important uh, is the privacy policy in case you uh, decide to upload, if you, in case you have to upload any files on the server, for example, you are converting a PDF uh, and this, uh, or a Word file, and you have to upload it in order to convert it to a different format, then it's very important to see the retention, the so-called retention strategies, whether uh, how long these files are kept on the server, who has access to them, etc. And some of you might remember in 2013, there was a, uh, a kind of a scandal with uh, uh, plagiarism tracking tool Viper. Uh, they, they were checking students' papers and it was actually discovered that they had, a, you know, those small print in their policies in terms of use, that they were reusing the files that were uploaded and they were fu fueled into a, a software that was, that created, uh, you know, these automatically generated papers offered for, uh, for pay. So uh, you should be very careful when uploading, never upload anything uh, that has any, any uh, personal data, any profession, uh, professional data related to a company or anything else. So don't, don't just don't upload them to a server that is not trusted. Uh, also, it's very important to know whether you can download and export your work and uh, in which formats this can be done. Because, for example, if you're using an interactive tool, you will see later, and it's very interactive and it's shiny and it's nice, but you can download it as a PNG file or a PDF. That's not what you want. That's not reusable. That's not uh, why you're using this tool. So this should be checked in advance. Uh, and also these formats, uh, whether these formats are interoperable, whether they can, for example, if you're using a tool, it, is, it should be important that you can download, for example, a CSV file of your data that you, or a XML file, and then uh, put this data into another tool and get a similar results. That's relatively important. Uh, it depends on the, on why you're using the tool, but it should be important. Also, the sustainability of service is very, um, it's very important, but it's difficult to assess. For example, there are tools that are discontinued. So you, you, you're using a tool and then after some time, you don't have access to it because uh, it was just discontinued. The startup failed, they couldn't uh, fund it, etc. So it's very important that you're able to be able to use it in a in a longer term and also uh, at the very beginning if you're using uh, tools for very serious purposes i'm not talking about the situations where you have to create one slide 
and that's all and you won't be using the tool anymore. But if you're creating something that is more important to you, it's very important to consider all the alternatives and to have a kind of an exit strategy. So, for example, always think, OK, if this tool fails, will I be able to save my work? For example, if you're using a web based platform for a, a website, you should consider, you will see later, you should consider all the options and know whether you can and in which formats you can export your work and whether you can uh, put this work uh, into another software locally hosted or another web based application so that your work doesn't actually and with the end of the service. So this, these things should be should be considered, especially if you're trying to find uh, something that you will use uh, permanently uh, throughout your, I mean, throughout your work. So as for presentations, uh, my greatest frustrations are these slides that we are using. Uh, so I remember I started using PC in 1994 or five. And PowerPoint presentation was almost the same. Not many functionalities changed, and this is just an outdated uh, technology. I lose so much time uh, formatting. Whenever I change a template, I have to adjust something, and it's really frustrating for me, but we are still using it because the community uh, it's widely used in the community, and this is so. So you have multiple options. I'm increasingly often using Google Slides because they are more, more convenient to share, and they have really nice templates that can be used, and uh, it's okay. I have issues when uh, converting them to this open uh, office format, and I don't really have the solution because it depends on the template. But also, so you, you can use Google Slides, it's free. Uh, there are two uh, free and open source options, Apache Open Office Impress and LibreOffice Impress. LibreOffice is uh, more convenient for those uni having uh, their PC computers under Linux, and uh, Apache Open Office is suitable for both. I'm using uh, this application on my computer. So it's uh, it's okay, but the the range of templates available for Impress is not that rich as it is for PowerPoint or for Google Slides. Uh, also, there are several um, quite attractive um, uh, tools. Uh, Canva is a freemium tool, and uh, Canva is I will mention it. I don't really like it, but I will mention it because it's useful. Uh, you can create uh, use Canva to create slides, but you can uh, create Canva to use Canva to create graphics, nice graphics, infograms. You can even uh, use uh, Canva to create uh, some very simple videos. Uh, so it's it's okay. It's web based. You uh, and what you get for freemium you get it you have some templates additional options if you pay but what you get on the freemium is quite satisfactory uh, Prezi, uh, I'm not using it. I don't really like it because I don't find these slides interoperable. They are not, if you use Pre Prezi, the text on these slides is not really findable in uh, Google. Uh, they may, might look nice, they're animated, but in its free trial and haven't tried it, uh, it's probably some options are free. Uh, if you're using the web-based applications, you can probably create uh, uh, presentations in Prezi, but uh, I, I don't really use it. and I. I mean, this is this interoperability thing that is quite important because if you upload a PowerPoint or Google Slides on a, on a platform or even a PDF, this text is searchable, which is not I'm not sure about uh, Prezi. Uh, something that I I haven't used but I consider using are uh, some applications that require coding, markdown presentation tools, uh, and there. Are multiple tools they're either web-based or downloadable applications and there are also other formats that's html html5 javascript etc they require some advanced knowledge and um, but uh, what is good about these options is that they are more interoperable and they are actually machine readable in a better way so i will i can't tell you now anything specific but if i in the future, if I test them, I'll, I'll share this, uh, my impressions. Uh, as for presentation templates, you can find a number of uh, websites with presentations templates. Most of them are freemium, but I highly recommend this Lights Carnival uh, website. You have really nice templates and they are all under the CC BY license. And they, they are created by a Spanish designer 
who actually offered them to the community. She doesn't sell them. And the only reason, as you can read on the, on the website, the only reason for sharing these templates, and she constantly produces new ones, and you can select them by colors, by, by you know, the flavor, etc. cetera. Uh, she, she said, I, I was sick of, um, of bad presentations, of bad design, and I wanted to offer something to the community. So over the past five years, I've been using only these. You can modify them, you can adjust them. They're really, really very nice. Not all of them are, there are some of them that are more difficult to format, but you can, there are plenty you can you can choose. So this is the, the website where you can go and you can search, it's really abundant. As for videos, video is definitely not my, my medium. I'm, awfully bad with videos it's not something that i can express my training ambitious but uh, if you need to make a video except for this uh, zoom recording option you can also use canva it's very nice because you can make a kind of an animated presentation where you can add uh in some short videos and combine these and actually edit them very nicely and then record um the voice over over these animated slides and uh, and the actual video and it, what is good about it you can export it in the mp4 format which is a widely used format and i tested this recently it's very good if you need an instant solution for a problem not a long-term solution if you have to do something quickly then it's a very good solution and it was recommended to me by a by a colleague OBS Studio is a very good, very serious um, application. It can be downloaded. It is truly free and open source software. It works on various uh, operation systems. And uh, what is good about it, it records a screen. So if you want professional recording of the screen and some video editing, it's very good because there are no limitations. There are no um, these watermarks, etc. So it's very good. And another tool that is quite ugly if you go to the website, but it's quite powerful. It's also free and open source. It's Avidabooks. I used it to edit some videos and it's really, um, it's uh, the website doesn't provide much information about it, but it's free and open source and many people use it and you can find videos explaining uh, various operations on YouTube. There are many videos and it's, it's very good uh, for, for this purpose. So if you want a kind of more serious editing, you can use these two uh, free and open source applications. This is what I did in Canva. So I made animated slides and then I also had some video and I just combined them and it was quite uh, nice and I exported as, as the MP4 format. As for image sources, I'm providing a list. There are quite many. Uh, we are often using this Unsplash and Pexels, uh, and they have their own license, which uh, is not not a Creative Commons license, but it's quite similar to um, to a public uh, a public domain license. Except that you, if you want to sell something, then you can't use. So if you want to use something for free, you can use. But if you want to sell something and close, then you have to pay so you can you can read this license but if you're using using for your presentations you can freely use these websites wikimedia commons is a very good uh, resource i'm a wikipedia so i'm contributing to this resource and but uh, the, the default license for wikimedia is usually cc by share alike for everything wikipedia is cc by share alike and it was only some years ago that I started using CC BY license for my uh, photos that I'm uploading there because I want people to be able to use it because CC BY is in a way limiting if people are using these uh, these photos and illustrations for for the presentations. So you you have to take care. There are many public domain works there, especially works of art, etc. So you can uh, you you should check the license if you're using uh, Wikimedia Commons. It's quite easily searchable. And you, you get uh, many Wikimedia Commons uh, works uh, while searching Google. So it's convenient for this purpose, but you have to check the license. Open Words is very good because all the uh, all the works there are under the CC license. And Pythmio is another where everything is public domain. So you have all these other stuff. Because it's something that is used uh, by Irena uses this a lot for vector graphics and for uh, PowerPoint templates. It's very similar to Canva, but it's actually freemium and you have to read. They have their custom license. 
So this is it. And you have this public domain vectors. So vectors are those you basically have pixel based and vector based images. Pixel based are those that, you know, you have, for example, 300 DPI and want to enlarge, then you it gets blurry. With vector based images, you can enlarge them as much as you want, but they don't get blurry. This is a different kind of uh, of a format. So vector based images, these are usually clip art, etc. You can find them on this public domain vectors website. Uh, I, I clicked the wrong link. Okay. Uh, as for image editors, uh, you, uh, I recommend to, uh, because Photoshop is great, but you have to pay a lot. Uh, also for um, uh, Adobe Acrobat or Corel Draw, they're very expensive, but very good. And even better alternatives are uh, GIMP and Inkscape, they are fully for free and open source, and they even have some better functionality. So I switched uh, fully to these. Uh, well, it was a bit difficult for me to switch from uh, Photoshop because you know, you know, after 20 years, you know the options, you know, with closed eyes, but it's okay. It, help is available on YouTube everywhere, so it's good. And also there is one tool that I remember it since the late 1990s, since the previous century, it's Irfan View. It's a really powerful image converter, image viewer. It's non-commercial. It, it can be used only for non-commercial purposes. It's freeware, uh, and it's really good. It's regularly updated. So it's been, uh, in, with my, in my computer life, it's been all the time with me. So it's, I highly recommend it if you have, for example, to change the massively change the names of photos or to do some conversions. It's very, it's very good. It's an application that is installed on your computer. As for infographics, most of these tools are actually freemium. And this is a bit uh, frustrating for me because I check, then I have to do this online editing, then I'm not satisfied with the result. And then I get back to, to slides and create something there on my own. Uh, so you can check these uh, Canva is okay. I used Infogram in Infogram. It's, it has some nice templates, but if you want to use Infogram, you have to share publicly your work. And it's good because slides can be animated. For example, if you're making, you know, these bar charts, they are animated and they're very nice. Uh, Genial is in Spanish, so it's good. Uh, and it's, it has some kind of a license for, uh, for teachers, for educators. And what's good, you can use it uh, genially to create games. But once you log in, it's all the interface is in Spanish, so it's good for Spanish. Although it's not very difficult to, to deal with it, it's quite easy to understand. Uh, what I can recommend if you want an instant solution, not too complicated, this slides carnival slides, they have their templates that already have these slide templates for infographics and they're very nice. And also they usually have one or two slides with small elements, small images that you can enlarge and use, use them to combine and create an infographic. So if you don't want to explore much and you need an instant solution, Slides Carnival is a good, good solution for you. Uh, for timelines, I like timelines. I'll show you one that I created some time ago. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a timeline of our uh, repositories, development of repositories and, uh, and uh, policies in Serbia. So these are repositories, these are policies, and once I click, I get a link or some information, etc. But the problem with this application is that it's actually freemium, and I'm not satisfied with the formats offered for export. But at the time I was creating it, I created it as a kind of, uh, I needed a an animated something animated for a presentation. I was invited to give a talk and I needed some instant solution. And then I just kept on maintaining it because people used it. So many people use this in their slides because this is the only complete overview of uh, our repositories uh, and the timeline when, when they were created. Uh, now I discovered this uh, free and open source solution that is very good and it uh, enables you to export in various formats, including CSV and XML. So what I will be doing, you can't export this. You can export only 40 events. I already have more. So and you, if you want to save it, you can save it as, either as a PNG or PDF. And it looks awful. It has an awful watermark. It's all tiny and 
it doesn't look okay, you can use it only like, like this on the web. And even this is, you know, just, it's not clear enough. So my, uh, my task for the future will be to convert probably manually to this other, to this other application. Uh, so this is, for example, a, a good example about the exit strategy. Now I have uh, this exit strategy until it's too late, but the risk of, for example, discontinuing this presentation and losing my uh, work would be, otherwise it would be quite, quite high. So I could end up without uh, something that actually I invested some effort in it. Uh, interactive diagrams, uh, if you know some coding, uh, D3JS, uh, it's a uh, uh, JavaScript uh, software. It's very good, but you know, you have to know some coding. It's great. Uh, I, I will show you the website. You really have extremely attractive, uh, extremely attractive visualizations for your, for your data. Well, this is the example of coding. I'll try to find some examples. Really nice, really animated. Uh, really uh, look at these so heat maps steam graphs uh, bar charts animated bar charts sunburst diagrams all sorts of uh, all sorts of diagrams that can really be used for really serious purposes to visualize research results so it's really it's really nice uh, there is another option uh, this is observable this is a freemium option and i'm using this uh, because you have many examples that you can actually uh, fork. This is fork, like uh, du duplicate, and then uh, you can uh, you can choose an example that is the most similar to what you want to create, and then you fork it, duplicate it, and then you can uh, you can actually uh, edit it. And uh, the, the, the limitation is that you have to make it publicly available. But the good thing is that you already have the code. So it's quite easy to replace uh, the data in the original diagram with your data. And the result is really nice and attractive. And you get a, an embed code that you can add to the website. So it's very nice. You can embed it in your website unless coding is required. As for maps, uh, if you haven't already added your uh drop on the map on the map that jonathan has shared please do because uh this is a uh, an application that you can fall in love with it's open street maps and uh it's free uh and it has really serious it, it relies on uh open street maps and it offers great opportunities and also you are able to license your data you are able to export your data uh, and it's really, it's really cool. Uh, so, for example, I use this application to create <coughs> a map of um, repositories in Serbia. And it's regularly updated. So you have, uh, so I add these drops. I can enlarge and I can see each repository. And here I have, uh, for example, if I want to see where, uh, where they are located, I can click. And get them, and then I get this um, this link, so I can access the. And it's zoomable; it's really, really nice. So I have three types of four types of repositories, etc. Uh, so it's very good, and I can export this data uh, as uh, GeoJSON, uh, and I can actually uh, add this data into another similar application and uh, and use it. It's really, really cool, and I highly re recommend you to to start using it's very simple simple to use you can either import data or you can do it manually just you know pick the coordinates and it's fine we are coming to an unorthodox part so what works best for me and uh although irina said yesterday that websites are not um not the best option for sharing training materials there are some conditions under which uh websites can be a very very good solution so you you're not able to for example if i'm uploading my pdf or a powerpoint presentations presentation i won't be able to uh to add the metadata in a machine readable way to a web page but what i can do is to uh, deposit uh, the presentation on zenodo and provide this reference with a doi link doi 
and some biblio, uh, some reference management tool will be able to read this uh, DOI. Also, uh, what is good about web presentations is that you can embed, for example, YouTube videos. Uh, you don't have to upload them to your website. You upload to YouTube, and then you get this embed code and add it to your website, and actually the video is played on YouTube, but it looks as if it were played on your website, and also these maps. Uh, so I have the same map, I create a map, and then I actually embed it in a number of websites, observable uh, graphics, etc. So it's very, it's a slide share, you can upload the presentations to slide share and share them on your website. So, so for me, websites are a very good solution, because Google, uh, if you do the search engine optimization properly, and it shouldn't be that difficult, uh, they are easily discoverable by Google. Uh, they can be used on various platforms. So these modern templates that are now used, they're available on mobile phones, on tablets, they're adjustable. PowerPoint is not very suitable for, you know, looking at on the mobile phone, but uh, website is, you know, responsive and the text adjusts the size, etc. So I, I use, I tend to use websites and what is good about it, you can, if you have basic skills, you can create it for free and you can in a way con control the content. For example, in Serbia, uh, there are quite many public librarians who are using WordPress. We had even a training provided by a colleague how to create a website for a library. Also some institutions, they have institutional websites, but it's extremely difficult for librarians to uh, get some space on these websites. It's very difficult to get access to, to the editing options of these websites. So these free hosting options, that are provided by WordPress or Joomla, uh, these first links, wordpress.com create and uh, Joomla launch, uh, launch Joomla org. This is where you go if you want to create a website. You have a number of very simple templates and you can use uh, uh, any of these templates. You can't modify it heavily, but they are okay and uh, you can just add your content there. So what is good about it is the exit strategy because once you decide to uh, make a better use, once you have more options, once you have a professional hosting, you can actually uh, take these, these materials and import them into a serious hosted professional option. Uh, which is actually very good because this effort is not wasted. What is also very good about these tools, they are both both uh, free and open source software options. They have a huge community behind them and the community behind them is not likely to sell the software. It's not Mendeley. They won't be selling it to anyone. WordPress is closely related to a number of... Uh... <coughs> oh, sorry to a number of open open science actual initiatives. It's closely related to Omeka, which is repository software, to Zenodo, uh, Zotero. So uh, they're not likely to be sold. And you can, uh, Zoomla was created by a guy who actually got rich by doing uh, doing programming, coding, etc. And then he wanted to contribute to, to the community. And it's hugely, they, they have premium options, but both, uh, both tools are hugely supported by, by a communities and crowdsourced so it's a very good uh, for, in my opinion this is something that you should you should consider another option i will show you some examples is media wiki it's not that attractive visually attractive but it's very good because it's simple to use and what is bad about it is that you can't really embed these videos there are some apps but they're not always fully supported media wiki is software that powers wikipedia and you can either uh, download it and install on your server or there are the so-called wiki farms hosting services and you can go there pick up something and create a, a wiki a kind of a website it looks like as a kind of a website you can even more, more it, make it look nice and what is good about all, all of these options uh, online options is that if you want to learn that you want to train yourself how to do things they are good because you can delete them whenever you want, you control them and you, they, you can use them as a kind of sandbox. Uh, and you can, and that's what I actually did. When I needed Vicky to provide some documentation for my repository, I went to Miraheze, uh, created a kind of Vicky there. I practiced there. And once it was fully complete, I just downloaded it and imported it into a hosted uh, option. 
Also, what is good if you want to practice, but it only also if you want to make a simple website, there are many hosting options, but the problem with them is that they are, you know, publishing ads. They are not ad free. And this one, uh, it is hosted in Germany and it is uh, the, uh, they call it green hosting because they use uh, the green energy to power this service. It's very good. You get uh, ad free space for hosting and you get this, you know, C panel where you can install Joomla, WordPress, even some other, uh, some other uh, to tools, some other software. And you can create a kind of a professional website that wouldn't support so many visits during month, but you don't expect huge traffic. Of course, you're creating something for a, a kind of limited uh, number of users, a uh, limited community. And it's very good if you want to practice because you can create, uh, you can, you know, just delete, create something, try, delete, install again, try again. And it's very good, uh, good for practicing. For example, we made, uh, we have a small conference. The thing is that if you don't have a domain, a paid domain, you will have a, a very unattractive uh, URL, which is biz HT or something like this, but it is not of great importance. You will be sharing the links with your community and they will be able to find it. So we, we need a free option to, for example, create a co conference website, a small conference website. We are using the, this hosting. It's co completely free and you can control it and there are no costs at all. So for example, this is an example of a website that Tobrat created. Unfortunately, I don't have a screenshot of this original website. He used this free hosting option. He created a website and then we had a project. We wanted to build upon this website and we actually used all the materials that he created there. We didn't have to do this manually. We managed to ingest this into a hosted option. And now we have a website that is actually the, the best venue that we have in our country about research data management. And maybe even use these uh, icons that he used. We all retained some elements of his design because we were quite satisfied. We changed the colors, but it is everything was already there. Another option is, for example, MediaWiki. So I created a kind of uh, media wiki documentation and then we are now creating a, a user manual Lilia has shown you this already a user manual uh, using this this platform it's easy to edit and it's hosted by the University of Belgrade but we could have hosted it on Miraheza or any anywhere else for free so this is what I suggest uh, to to consider and also uh, be aware that these tools are not and they are quite far from perfect. I'm usually disappointed that we are using technologies that are really outdated and nobody really cares. And for me, uh, making presentations the way I'm doing them now is a kind of a lot of wasted effort, effort wasted on formatting and the interoperability is uh, limited because if I want to transfer these materials to, to a website, I have to do this manually, have to do all the formattings there to adjust the content and it's not, not optimal for me. Uh, it's good to test new tools. Uh, some of these uh, uh, free and open source tools, they depend on the, on the size of the community behind them. So if more people use them, they're more likely to survive. So it's if, if you can support them by using them, you don't have to pay donations, but uh, you support them by using them. And also, I believe that we should consider, reconsider formats, etc., and everything that we are using now. Some things related to Moodle, I don't really like. I, for example, SCORM format is not an interoperable format. So we should reconsider some uh, well-established practices in the light of reusability uh, for the community. And also what I would like to suggest, for example, video is definitely not my medium. Websites are indeed. So uh, choose something that will allow you to convey your ideas best. So it might be video, but if it's not, then find an, alt alt uh, an alternative. Okay, that's all for me. Sorry for going a bit over time. Maybe if I can uh, add a few words uh, briefly yeah. um, about uh, the software we, we were speaking about free software to use but uh, you, you should also think that there is a community behind it work on it uh, and uh, you 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 should consider uh, to support 
not only new tools, but also tools yeah. that you are using every day. Uh, and uh, by by also giving, you, you can give financial support, but yeah. even speaking is a way to help, yeah. uh, answer some questions. There is many ways to help. Um, and um, to achieve, to, to, to be able to have more new tools, more mature tools uh, with more maturity, we, we will need to have more people involved and uh, supportive uh, regarding uh, open source software. So it's important uh, to, to help to uh, the community. Uh, Simon, I, will sh I didn't have the time to respond to very interesting questions uh, uh, on, uh, on, on the forum, but in Serbia we have a conference dedicated to free and open source software. It's very interesting and we are trying to build this kind of community. I always say that uh, in, in countries that are not that well off, uh, whole infrastructure or a repository infrastructure that is very important, DSpace, uh, ePrints, uh, uh, even in Vino, uh, they are. Uh, we we wouldn't have any inf any infrastructure if it hadn't been for uh, for open source software. So it's community is is crucial. Yeah, uh, as I said in my uh, in my post in uh, Open Plateau, open source is already everywhere, but there is like closed source software are built on top of open source software. That's how it works today. And uh, there is this big question, the switch, for, for example, Zenodo is open source. We are building a more, more and more tools uh, the, um, for, for, yeah, the, yeah we, we, we need to, to think about how to build effective tools and open source could be the way, so. Definitely, it definitely is. So, for example, for me, this community around WordPress, Omeka, Omeka is great. You also have hosted uh, free hosting solutions. And for example, it's very good because it's a it's repository software and you can add metadata. It looks like a very attractive website, but it's actually very easy to use and uh, it can be used for um, even for training materials. For example, my colleagues in museums, they use it for some exhibitions that they want to make available online for books, et cetera. So th this is something, I mean, we need to be better informed, uh, even if we are not involved in coding, if we are not uh, professionals in this area, we should be more informed, we should be uh, able to know and to actually make some uh, assessments and uh, conclusions regarding what to use and what not to use and how sustainable the options available are. We have one of the board members, Adam Haidt, uh, from COCO, Collaborative Knowledge Foundation, and we were discussing that maybe we could launch a series of webinars about uh, uh, free and open source tools that uh, could be used in uh, scholarly communication, and he was willing to do that. And maybe if, if some of you would like to share your, your tools now, because that, that was a plan that uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit what, what tools you're using and uh, if you will be interested to co-organize those series of webinars with us, uh, that would be great. And open journal systems, uh, Janeway. So you have, a, I mean, huge amount of services and uh, and options depend on open source software. Everything depends on open source software. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And actually, community is crucial. Whatever we do, community is crucial. Thanks a lot. Um, maybe we can move on to other interactive parts or, and I guess I'll still delete.